now at 5.30 on Newswatch. The Athens County Commissioner gets more pressure today from a fracking advisory group. Ohio's Attorney General is making consumer protection a top priority. And in sports, one local basketball team is ready to make a big splash in the Ohio High School Tournament. Broadcasting live from WOUB-TV in Athens, this is Newswatch. Over 200 residents of Athens and surrounding counties are concerned about the formation of a fracking advisory committee. Good evening, everyone. I'm Katie Dalp. The group expressed their concern today in a letter directed to the Athens County Commissioners. Amarang's Tim Brutengott has more on the story. The residents who signed the letter are worried the committee will not reflect the needs of most Athens County citizens, people who are not leasing their land to oil and gas drilling companies. From the uh, research we've done so far and looking at all three landowner groups, only about three at most five percent of the residents of Athens County have signed gas leases. And while there may be a larger percentage that are in favor, clearly the overwhelming majority of residents of Athens County have not signed a lease, have chosen not to sign gas leases. But just the fact that a minority of people has signed leases does not mean all other people oppose fracking, says Commissioner Lenny Eliason. I don't think that you have 95 percent of people that are opposed to it. I think a lot of people don't have an opinion in it. Among those who do have a strong opinion about fracking is Dave Willoughby, who represents a group of leasing landowners. Willoughby has had enough of the ongoing protest against fracking. I'm sure it would be nice to see it to be able to limit the time applied to this on a weekly basis so that the county can move forward with county business and not be drug into this battle. Blaze Vicious is not surprised. Because these people are being promised uh, large amounts of money for leasing their land. So uh, those of us who are holding out uh, will not be receiving that, but we are receiving, we think we are winners because we are living in a beautiful, unspoiled place where we can have good community, good, high-quality, local, organic food and live healthy lives in a, in a natural environment. The county commissioners are still mulling over the formation of an advisory committee with a decision expected in a couple of weeks. A major issue seems to be the makeup of the committee, who specifically will participate. Amarens de Bruggengate, WOUB News. A special prosecutor assigned to one of the criminal cases against an Athens County Commissioner is asking the court to send him to jail. Prosecutor Colleen Williams filed a motion in Athens County asking to revoke Mark Sullivan's probation. Sullivan pled guilty to disorderly conduct in July. He was originally charged with domestic violence but agreed to plead guilty to the lesser charge. Williams says a January domestic violence incident <clears throat> Excuse me. Williams says that a January domestic violence incident where Sullivan is accused of hitting his adult niece in Nelsonville is a violation of his probation. She asks that Sullivan serve 30 days in jail. The judge is expected to make a decision later this month. Over in West Virginia, a Wood County Sheriff deputy is back in uniform after a judge dismissed charges against him because the prosecution failed to meet their burden of proof. Brian Swigger was accused of waving his gun in front of a small crowd in Elizabeth back in October. The Wood County Sheriff says Swigger is fully reinstated into the office and started working again today. Authorities have identified the man in yesterday's MacArthur fatal fire as 59-year-old Thomas Haggerty. Investigators still do not know the origin and cause of the fire. They're asking people who may have information to get in touch. And the Washington County Sheriff's Deputy Department has released a picture from a security camera of the truck that deputies believe was involved in a recent copper theft at Uramet. Sheriff Larry Mink says 8,000 to 10,000 pounds of copper pipe is missing. The picture shows a white truck with an extended trailer. The pipe was no longer being used and was being hauled out by the Uramet company to be recycled. And the Cambridge man has been charged with placing his three-year-old son in a clothes dryer to punish him. Guernsey County Sheriff's deputies didn't, didn't see any visible injuries on the child when 40-year-old Jeremiah Biley was arrested after a house check. Biley is charged with child endangerment. And good evening from the Newswatch Weather Center. First, to start off, the National Weather Service has issued a winter weather advisory, and that is not for Athens County. It is everything to the southwest of Fairfield and Hawking County. So be aware of that. It is going to be in effect from 3 p.m. on Friday until noon on Saturday. So keep an eye on this just in case any other counties do become a part of the advisory or it changes into a watch or a warning. Current temperatures right now, everybody is in the uh, lower 30s to mid 30s. Warmest temperature in Huntington and Ashland at 36. Chilliest up in St. Clairsville at uh, 32. 
For uh, the precipitation tracker for today, if you take a look, we are dominated by high pressure, so that gave clear skies and pretty warm temperatures. But unfortunately, there is a low pressure system that's going to be moving through the region, dropping temperatures for tomorrow. For tonight, it's going to be mostly clear, starting to cloud up right around 3 a.m. at 26. Katie? I can't believe we're going to see snow again. This is unbelievable. I know. We haven't seen any for a long time. So All stay right. tuned, and I'll have more details coming Thanks, up. Thanks, Katie. Sure. The next school year could be more expensive for students at West Virginia University in Parkersburg. The School Board of Governors has voted to raise tuition by 10%. If the increase is approved, students seeking a bachelor's degree would pay an additional $314 for the year. Students seeking a certificate, a certificate or associate's degree would pay $220 more for the year. The chief financial officer says the increase is needed to meet rising costs. WVU Parkersburg tuition would still be one of the lowest in the state. In West Virginia, auditors say Mason County is addressing financial problems within its school system. However, the Office of Education Performance Audits is recommending that the State Board of Education continue the school system full accreditation. The recommendation comes a little more than a year after the office uncovered problems in the school system. A new audit shows the county has fixed many of the problems. The federal government is providing funding to West Virginia to improve internet access at schools and libraries. 21 counties, the State Department of Education, and the Regional Education Service Agency will share the E-rate program funding. The program is intended to assure that students can access the internet regardless of where they live or their family's income. A former Jackson County prosecutor is now focusing on a certain kind of lawbreaker. Jonathan Blanton is now the head of the Consumer Protection Section for Ohio Attorney General Mike DeWine. DeWine says the Consumer Protection works in, work involves filing civil cases on behalf of the public, and he's made it a priority to take it to the next level, which means trying to get jail time for scam artists. It is a robust uh, operation. It's going to get uh, more aggressive uh, as, as we get moving further along, and we're very, very proud of it. We have a good cooperation with local law enforcement. Um, the, the scams that we see in this office uh, are just, uh, to me, astounding. Uh, the Craigslist uh, uh, scams, we've had everything from uh, murder um, to the uh, bilking of the public for hundreds of thousands of dollars. Blanton will work to identify potential criminal cases, present them to local prosecutors, and coordinate assistance to help in their prosecution. Ohio Republicans will get some input from afar into a March 1st presidential primary debate in Atlanta. The state party says it's partnering with Georgia Republicans for the Super Tuesday debate. Ohio residents will get a chance to ask questions of the candidates at a yet-to-be-decided location. Pipples in Ohio would no longer automatically be labeled as vicious dogs, according to a bill that is headed to the governor's desk. The House overwhelmingly agreed to the Senate's changes to the bill. State law currently defines a vicious dog as one that has seriously hurt or killed a person, killed another dog, or is a pit bull. The bill would remove the reference to pit bulls from the definition and require evidence to prove pit bulls are actually vicious. Hawking College is undergoing scrutiny by the Higher Learning Commission. The president of Hawking will be here to tell us how the school is dealing with the commission concerns. And the battle over new birth control mandates is heating up next on Newswatch. A compromise may be in the works for a controversial policy that would require church-affiliated employers to cover birth control. The Catholic Church and some Republicans have called President Obama's policy an attack on religious freedom. Tommy Andres has more on an alternative solution. The Obama administration is trying to quiet the uproar over its birth control mandate. The new rule would require all employers, including religious schools, hospitals, and charities, to offer birth control under their health care plans. Churches and other houses of worship would be exempt. What they're saying is, it's okay for you to not include things that are morally repugnant or violate your conscience if you're only serving the members of your church. But if you go out and help people who may not be members of your church, if then, then you have to cover this. So think how absurd that is. The Catholic Church has slammed the new rule as an attack on religious freedom. But a recent poll shows that 58% of Catholics agree that birth control should be covered. 
Supporters say that's because the real issue is about women's access to health care. This is um, an issue of women's health, and I think that Catholic Charities uh, believes very deep, deeply that it's important that women get the health care they need. The White House has signaled it's willing to compromise with religious institutions. We want to work with all these organizations to implement this policy in a way that is as sensitive to their concerns as possible. Senior administration officials say policymakers are now looking for an alternate solution, including allowing employers to purchase contraceptive coverage directly from insurers. I'm Tommy Andres reporting. 28 states already have similar coverage requirements. The new policy goes into effect on August 1st, but religious groups will have a year-long extension to enforce the rule. Americans that owe more on a house than it's worth may be in luck. Some of the nation's largest banks have reached a settlement with the federal government in a lawsuit about improper foreclosures. Today, the Departments of Justice and Housing and Urban Development, along with 49 other state attorneys general and other federal agencies, have reached a landmark $25 billion agreement with the nation's five largest mortgage servicers, Bank of America, J.P. Morgan Chase and Company, Wells Fargo and Company, Citibank, and Ally Financial, which was formerly GMAC. This agreement reflects our commitment at both the federal and state levels to ensure justice and to recover losses for victims of reckless and abusive mortgage practices. At least $17 billion of the settlement is expected to go to cutting the principal owned by people who are behind on their mortgages. People who are underwater but are current on their mortgages will be able to refinance their current loans at a lower rate, but they likely won't see their principal cut. Hawking College just went through a periodic review by the Higher Learning Commission. A report said that the college is deficient on three of five cr criteria for accreditation. Here to talk with us about the report is Hawking College President Ron Erickson. President Erickson, thanks for being here with us tonight. Thanks, Kitty. It's great to be back. Yeah. Now, the Higher Learning Commission issued a report recently that, according to a published report, raises red flags at Hawking College. Is the college in accreditation trouble? Well, the good news is it isn't. Uh, and some <coughs> of the reports that came out were actually inaccurate. Uh, when, you, when you read the report fully, you'll realize that we met all five criteria uh, that we are uh, uh, supposed to meet by the Higher Learning Commission. Uh, what we did, however, uh, receive from them was uh, some actions that they recommended we take uh, in the near future uh, in order to address some of the uh, issues that they discovered. So have the concerns been resolved, and if not, when will they be? Sure. They, they basically <coughs> fall into uh, a couple categories. One was uh, board governance. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they cited the, our recent conflict uh, last year at the college between the Board of Trustees and my office. And I'm really uh, very pleased to say that we've already uh, taken steps in uh, that direction to resolve it. Uh, the board and I just went through uh, policy governance training just last week, in fact, uh, which was uh, facilitated by the uh, Association of Community College Trustees. Had a wonderful uh, workshop with them, and uh, we're off to a, to a very good start. Shared governance is also an issue that was raised, and we've got a number of new committees uh, that we're setting up at the college uh, to, uh, to address that issue. And uh, um, the buildup of a healthy financial reserve. This was an issue that we had uh, over 10 years ago, actually, when they, when they uh, visited us last. And we're still working to really uh, uh, build that reserve to a healthy level. But the good news is, is that we did not fail the criteria, but we have some work to do. Now, another published report said mm -hmm. enrollment is down at Hawking. Mm -hmm. And again, I'm afraid the facts are not quite right. Some mm -hmm. published reports put us at a drop of 18.5%. Uh, that was just a case of bad uh, mathematics. The fact is uh, that we are currently uh, just under a drop of 9%, about 8.76%. And uh, while that isn't the direction we like to see enrollment going, it's not uh, terribly uncommon to see that kind of drop across Ohio public uh, colleges. Now, how about the projected budget shortfall? Is that being worked out? It sure is. I've got a tremendous team of, of people uh, helping me look at the projected deficit based on enrollment drops and a drop in state aid as well. We're currently uh, projecting about a loss of uh, $2.9 million 
Uh, but we think that we'll be able to actually uh, uh, weather that storm quite nicely with a number of uh, actions that we can take to uh, streamline our, our operations and become more efficient. Now, just briefly, you've had some labor unrest on campus, not being able to work out a new contract with your support staff. What's the latest on that? Well, it's, it's always a frustrating situation when you can't settle a contract with a bargaining unit, and I can't speak uh, in depth about it right now because negotiations are ongoing. Uh, suffice it to say that um, with uh, shrinking state support, we have to look at new tools in order to really maintain the bottom line. We certainly understand that they have their needs and their issues as well, and I'm really, uh, I'm really encouraged by the fact that negotiations aren't going, and I hope for a, for a uh, settlement soon. Absolutely. Well, President Erickson, thank you so much for being here with us tonight. Always a pleasure, Katie. Thank you. And on Wall Street today, demand for Treasuries weakened after Greece moved closer to a deal that would prevent the country from defaulting on its debt. Here's a look at some stocks of local interest. The precip is in, so I told you, the precip is in route, but when is this precip going to hit? And when it does, what type is it going to be? I'm going to cover all this in my extended forecast. Stay tuned. And welcome back to Newswatch. Just to remind you again that the National Weather Service has issued a winter weather advisory and that's going to be in effect at 3 p.m. on Friday until noon on Saturday. But for right now in Athens, it is 33 degrees, partly cloudy. The winds are out of the west at 7 miles per hour. Humidity is at 56 degrees, and that's because the dew point is relatively low at 19 degrees. Pressure is currently holding steady at 30.28 inches. For our almanac today, we saw a high of 36 and a low of 22. So we're just about, give or take, a little, just about seasonable, and that is going to change as that cold front starts to move through. Sun rose today at 727 and will set at 557, just at the, at the very end of our show. Now, what's going on for tonight? There's a ridge of high pressure, and that's pushing through, so that's what's given us beautiful weather for the past couple of days. Clear skies. Unfortunately, that's on the way out, and then cold, um, the cold front from the north is going to start to be moving in. So when that, it's going to shoot down, and then it's going to push east. For tomorrow, it's still going to be sunny, and it, the, the energy from that low-pressure system is just going to start to affect us tomorrow right around 3 p.m., and it's going to be a rain-snow mix. Then for tomorrow night, as that cold front continues to inch towards our region, that is when it's going to change from the rain-snow to only snow, and that's going to be right about after 11 p.m., and then on Saturday, that's when the cold front officially has moved through our region. So that's where you're really going to notice the effects of what this cold front did to temperatures. Lows for Saturday night, 11 degrees. So be sure if you're going to be going outside to bundle up. Just to show what these temperatures are going to be doing for tomorrow, temperatures are just about where they were for today, 37, 38. And then for Saturday, they drop almost 10 degrees, and they're going to be at the upper 20s to mid-20s. And then the same factor is going to happen with the lows. For tonight, our low is right about 28 then for tomorrow, it's going to be dropping to 23. And then, as I said, by Saturday, almost a single digits. So be sure to be aware of that because it's going to be, we've been seeing such unseasonably warm weather that it's going to seem even more shocking to see those really cold temperatures. Then for the amount of precip that we're going to be seeing, not that much to worry about, in all honesty. For Friday, there's, we could see less than a tenth of an, uh, a less than a tenth of an inch of any sort of accumulation. For the counties that are under the winter weather advisory, they're saying that you could see up to an inch to two inches. But I'm not really positive that's going to happen. I, and then on Saturday, it's going to be a trace as it moves through. For tonight, we're going to be seeing a low of 23. It is going to be partly cloudy with a light southwest wind. For tomorrow, 39. Got a lot on this slide. Increasing clouds during the day. Then it's going to be rain snow mix after 3, and then snow only after 11 p.m. High of 39, west winds out of the five, at 5 to 10. Then for your daily planner, you can see nothing at 9 a.m., and then as we go through the day, that's where the chance for precip increases by 9 p.m., 80% chance it's to see that rain snow mix, and then by 11, it's going to be only snow. Then for your seven-day forecast, 60% throughout the entire day, about an average for tomorrow at 60%, and then for uh, Saturday, we're only at 50 Sunny, it's sunny. Monday night, chance for rain returns and it will be rain. 
I can't believe the only sunny day we have ahead of us is <laughs> Sunday. Sunday. It looks a lot worse. It always does because it's the rain comes back on Monday in the evening. So you get it's really Sunday and Monday. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks, Katie McGraw. Sure. And Mark Pierce, it's been a pretty slow day for OU sports, hasn't it? Yeah, it's kind of unusual when OU isn't, you know, kind of busy around. Absolutely. But we got plenty of action on the high school level. A local high school team plays their final regular season game tonight. I've got your complete preview next on Newswatch. The Athens Lady Bulldogs are sitting atop of the Tri-Valley Conference, standing with a 14-5 record. The Lady Bulldogs are back in action tonight for the regular season finale. Athens hits the road to Wellston, looking to end the season on a 10-game winning streak. The Lady Bulldogs ha have been on a tear, and they haven't lost since last year. Bad jokes aside, Athens have set themselves up perfectly for a playoff position. Athens has drawn Lancaster Fairfield Union to play in the opening sectional matchup, and head coach Wayne Horsley tributes their success to their chemistry. They genuinely love each other. And, and that's, you can tell, and, you know, our Florida trip did nothing but bring us, you know, even closer and, and bring the younger girls closer with the older girls, and, and it's, you know, it's been a lot of fun. Other area high school games include another TVC Ohio matchup with the Nelsonville York Buckeyes making the short trip to Alexander to face the Spartans. Tremble takes on Waterford in a TVC Hawking showdown, and Wahama travels to Southern. You can find all the high school basketball information you could ever want by watching Hardwood Heroes on WOUB2. The show airs Sunday nights at 6.30 and re-airs Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday at 8 p.m. Brad Appleton is the host, and his team of reporters brings you exclusive coverage of the Tri-Valley Conference. The Hardwood squad will be recapping the past week's game and looking forward to the remaining schedule as the regular season comes to a close. The Bobcats dropped a tough loss last night to Toledo, 77-73. In the game, Ohio in the game, Ohio was much less aggressive in previous games, getting dominated on the glass. Toledo won the rebounding battle, 43 to Ohio's 32. Ohio head coach John Gross was anything but pleased with his team's physicality. Yeah, th this one's uh, really simple. 36 points in the paint to our 20, 20 offensive rebounds to our 19 defensive rebounds. Um, I don't know what the final score was uh, with the loose balls, but they won the loose balls. Uh, they were tougher, bottom line. Just taking a glance at the, MAC, at the MAC, the East Division has dominated the matchups this season against the Western Division opponents. The East schools are 25-5 and five against the West. The Bobcats are 5-1 and one against MAC West schools. The Ohio football team signed 19 recruits on National Signing Day, but grabbed only one defensive back. The Bobcats struggled last season, last season in the secondary with injuries, but only Torin Davis is listed as an incoming DB. Sebastian Smith is listed as an athlete and can play the safety position. Devon Henry is also listed as an athlete and can play on the offensive and defensive sides of the ball. Ohio softball is on their way to South Carolina to open the season tomorrow against St. Bonaventure at the USC Update, uh, Upstate Classic. They will also play Detroit on Saturday and finish the weekend with their host, USC, on Sunday. The defending MAC East champs have 13 returners, including six starters. They will look to improve uh, from their impressive 26 and 23 season last year when they set the record for most single home runs in program history with 35. Players to look out for this year are seniors Jillian Van, Van Wagnon, Alex Joseph, and junior Lauren Jellerman. And tune in to WOUB 1340 AM right after Newswatch for Sportsbeat. We have a jam-packed show for you tonight featuring interviews with two football recruits, Jake Shaney from Nebraska and Sebastian Smith from Pickerington Central in Columbus. Your host, Rob Giuliano, will take you through all the latest OU sports updates and then turn the mic over to Hardwood Heroes online hosts, Pat Moore and Graham Fugazi, to talk about the high school girls' boys and, basketball se boys and girls' basketball scenes. Well, thanks, Mark. That's always an entertaining show, right? Yep. <laughs> and stay tuned tonight on WOUB. Here's a look at what's coming up next on your public television station. The 2009 Labor Day weekend fires took out more than 1,600 homes. Jan and Joe Schwint did not lose their home in the fire, but a good friend did. The Schwinks, who moved from Colorado recently, gave their friend many of the items they had in storage. 
In order to help fire victims go from zero to furnish, the Schwinns spread the word about the need for furniture and appliance donations. Since opening in mid-October, the Schwinns say zero to furnish has helped more than 342 families. The Schwinns say they remain awestruck by the need that still exists five months after the fires and the generosity of a community. Well, Katie McGraw, it's not going to be dry here recently, right? No, it is not. Starting tomorrow, that's when that rain still mix is going to start. But for tonight, it's going to be 23, partly cloudy with a light south wind. Then tomorrow, as I said, it's going to be a high of 39, increasing clouds for your morning, rain snow mix after 3, and then only snow after 11. It's going to be a nasty day for tomorrow and then for your seven day forecast 60 percent throughout your entire day on friday you can see on saturday what that low is what that cold front's doing 11 degrees for saturday only 17 on sunday things start to look up temperature wise for monday and then uh, also all that unfortunately though with monday with the warmer temps so we're precip it's going to be all rain though all right well we better get our uh Umbrella. jackets out again yeah, and right? umbrellas that's crazy <laughs> oh, I was insane. well thanks katie sure. and that does it for our broadcast on this 9th of february 2012. thanks for watching for katie mcgraw mark pierce and myself i'm katie Taub. you can get the latest news and weather on the woub radio network and you can view our program anytime online at woub.org have a great night